Hello, everybody. Jack Tall speaking from home. Uh, and Grace will take over in a few minutes. And I just got back yesterday from the Northeastern Caribbean. And uh, we had good results. Ramin Parsa and I went together. And uh, we started out in uh, Puerto Rico. And then we went to St. Thomas, back to Puerto Rico. And then on to Anguilla, which is a British possession. And so the overall results were two Bible schools, one in English and one in Spanish in San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, two on St. Thomas, and three on Anguilla. And God, as usual, showed up, and he did some great miracles of associating, you know, and we, we were referred to other contacts, and uh, we went there with no contacts at all, but the Lord provided. It was wonderful. So I just wanted to uh, take this few minutes and give you the, the results. Next week, I will be teaching, and Grace will take a rest. She's taught three weeks in a row now when, uh, when she completes tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to her. This is called Healing Number Four, fourth class on healing. Okay, take it away, honey. Okay, we'll change seats here. I'm going to move this a little bit closer. Here we are. Hallelujah. Here we are. <laughs> Welcome. And we have some friends, some new friends in the house here. And we are delighted. I'm thrilled Jack is back. Because if anything goes wrong, remember the first time I did it, Sean, that I was at right angles. <laughs> so when you picked me up on Facebook, you had to turn me around. So God is here and we have some special friends and people may come in the door. The door is not locked and um, it's wonderful to be with you. Um, this is going to many nations. We've heard from Papua New Guinea, a pastor that was our friend there. And let's see, Hungary, England and Austria, they have shared it. So I am excited, no matter how many I am doing what the Lord has asked me to do. And I'm delighted because um, mainly he is here and I got his word. Here it is. <laughs> here it is. Uh, God is good. God is good because um, I'm talking about the character of God all through the ages. And like I said, I am teaching from this book. If you can see it, Christ the Healer by F.F. F. Bosworth. That is a classic. Um, but this is edited or redone by his son and uh, taken some of the, shortened some of the sentences because he wrote long sentences, but he didn't take any of the, the good stuff out, but edited it so people in our age, well, say the millennials, can um, can enjoy it. But the arguments, I mean, it is fantastic, the things I am learning. It's a thrill. So I'm using that, but I'm um, the Lord has also showed me some new things. And I sure Jack and I have studied this for years under Kenneth Hagen because we felt we needed it. And we started with the headaches. We started with the stomach aches because we, we heard that, um, oh, he never had a headache in 25 years. And we thought, that's ridiculous. <laughs> But we thought, well, why not try it? So we did. We started with that years ago. I didn't have any horrendous disease or anything, but I've had on here my testimony of healing from uh, allergy when we moved to the valley here because of all the dust flying and how God healed me of that and how God healed my knee. I did not get a knee replacement um, because I have seen a warehouse in heaven. So I got a knee replacement, and Jack has taught on quantum faith. He may even teach on that next week. I don't know. That's real popular. There's other teachers on quantum faith now because of Annette Capps. Maybe she started that. She did some research on that and found it to be very interesting. Um, because when I did my knee thing, I just visualized it 
everything is alive, you know, as you learned in school, that little molecule down there, and there's electrons going around it and protons going around it, and then you go deeper yet, or, or with a modern microscope, you can do, go down to the quarks, and then they call them leptons and gluons and what else? <laughs> Nuons. And, <laughs> and they obey at the uh, your voice. Uh, they respond in faith differently for people because faith and the words um, of your mouth change things. So we are delighted to be here. We got some new people coming in. Hallelujah. So anyway, I'll keep on teaching here. God is good. So I am going to, um, like I say, I have added some things that we have studied. Jack and I have loved this subject for years. And by the grace of God, we are healthy. We're in our 80s now. And uh, we went to Bible school. In fact, we taught in a Bible school. But mainly we love the word. We just really love it. So we study it. And um, it becomes life to us. And we have not had to take uh, medicine. Except, well, off and on. But anyway, um, uh, I mean, welcome them in, Jack. <laughs> I guess there's some new people. We want them to be welcome. But anyway, um, so we studied, and by the grace of God, we are on no medication um, for all of these years. Of course, we take our vitamins and do what we can and try to eat properly. And... Um, we are good. God is good. We just want people to know that God is a good God. Welcome. Come in. Have a seat. Uh, God is a good God. So I'm going to go through some of these things, uh, starting, like I said, from Christ the healer. And he's talking about some things um, historically. What's the character of God? So we go back to the uh, um, welcome. <laughs> go back to the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were healthy, weren't they? They didn't have any sickness, but when they sinned, then disease and death came in. And of course, sickness came in because sickness is a result of this um, disobedience. So they, um, you know, started to die, didn't they? They lived a long time, but since their bodies were uh, created and us too, created in the image of God, um, it was a slow process of their death. They lived a long time and God was gracious, but they couldn't stay in the garden anymore, could they? They had to go out. So anyway, then we go back to, um, let's see, Adam and Eve. Then I talked about Noah. You know, um, God saw the condition of man that it was only wicked continually and their thoughts were wicked continually. So he um, brought through the flood, didn't he? And destroyed. He almost repented. Did he repent that he had made man? And because that's our human nature, isn't it? We are prone to sin. But he had a plan. God had a plan that we could get a new nature when you receive Jesus. And so we can have victory over that sin nature. But those people didn't know that at that time because God was revealing himself slowly through the ages of how good he is. You know, actually, there was kindness of God to move Adam and Eve out of the garden They'd taken that tree of life. He had made the rules. They couldn't do that. But if they had eaten of that, which they could, they would have lived forever in that bad condition. No, that wouldn't work. So anyway, God is good. Um, let's see. Later, we have the example of the Israelites. Moses, God had given the law, and then he gave rules for obeying the law. Uh, the Ten Commandments, and then he gave rules uh, to Moses. We have in Deuteronomy all the curses that would be on people if they disobeyed. And this whole list of diseases, I, I read that how many, how many verses are there from, uh, let's see, uh, many of them. Uh, let's see, so many of them listed, those were the curses but now we know that Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. But still there are consequences, aren't there? And we've all sinned, because I, I want to just say this in humility, that it's by the grace of God that Jack and I are able to travel overseas. And we've been in this ministry for, is it 32 years now, honey? Living by faith, 
Uh, Jack quit his job with the Air Force. He took his retirement in a lump sum. And then we lived on that for a while, which means we had no insurance, no income coming in. We used it and, and ceded a lot to people who came to the church where we were working. Then we worked in children's church and they gave us a salary. Um, but anyway, it was still by faith. And we had to sell a car and we had to, he sold his guns and we had to do some other things. We collected newspapers. I think back to those years, like we really um, took steps of faith. The house was paid for because, of, you know, with that, uh, Jack inherited some money from his mother, paid off the, the house. So we're in like Ken Copeland would say, get in the land of even where you don't owe anything. <laughs> So we're in the land of even still, but yeah, but still on the house, you got to pay the insurance, you got to pay the taxes, you got to pay the utilities. You can't turn off your utilities because then it'll cost a whole bunch to turn it back on again. You can't even turn off the TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would cost $100 to turn it back on again <laughs> in addition to what you're paying. Or the telephones, you know. So God is good. We live by faith. Our children gave us some money. One daughter and her husband still give us money every month. I'm sure they tithe to their church, but they give us some. And although they don't believe everything we do, but anyway, they honor us because they were taught at their church, denominational church, whatever, to honor their parents. And they are blessed. And our two grandchildren their children are blessed too and walking with the Lord. So we are thrilled about that. But the money comes and the money goes. <laughs> Jack has gone overseas 120 times now. 128. And I forget. I went over 80 times or is it more? 72. Oh, 70. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we lived in the jungle, and God blessed us, and we, I don't want to get into that story right now. I'm on healing. So anyway, we talked about Moses. So um, then last week, we talked about the Passover. Remember, they had to do the Passover before, be, before they left. They had to slay the lamb, and they had to eat of the lamb. And not any leftovers, you know, because God had told him. Then they put the blood on the doorpost there. And it was all pointing to, to the cross of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. So they did this. And um, then it says they, they left. And the Egyptians gave him um, gold and silver. And it says there was not one feeble one among them or not one that stumbled. So God bless them. So I just want to say, you know, if you're um, believing for some healing, I recommend um, doing the, uh, the communion every day. I've been doing it recently or off and on, but uh, recently, and I've been getting up a little bit, or um, I'm putting in some prayer time and praying in tongues more often than before, because I'm pressing in. Our government and many governments are in turmoil. And it is worth it, you losing an hour of sleep. It's worth it giving up on some food because I'm. this is a crucial time in the world, not only our nation, but in your nation. Uh, it says in, uh, where was that, Habakkuk or is it Micah, that everything is going to shake. The silver and gold belongs to the Lord. So we have no fear for the future. Oh, God's given us so many scriptures because we're gracious to the poor as we go overseas. We've gone to Habakkuk to Haggai to yeah, Jack knows the Bible <laughs> really well. Uh, so anyway, um, we've gone overseas. We lived in the jungle and because I knew, hey, if God could take care of those millions of Jews the, coming out of Egypt, there was not one feeble one among them, then he could take care of me. I've got antibiotics. We had our cholera shots. We had everything in the natural. We even took gamma globulin so that would boost our immune system. And we took antibiotics with us when we lived in the jungle. And, and God blessed us. We lived there like three months at a time because we had gone to that tribe and taught them English and fell in love with them. They were always singing. The Baptists had been there earlier. And so they were, um, they were acquainted with the Bible and they sang. 
And they thought they were all born again because their parents were Christians or Baptists. And we said, no. <laughs> so we had a good, good chance to teach them. And so it changed our life. And that's how Jack quit his job. And then we went back to teach them and live with them. And it was a blessing. But it was a, a thing of faith, too. And uh, many of you on Facebook uh, were friends of us, and you knew some of our stories because you were students at Spirit Life Bible College, and we were teachers there. We were blessed to learn some really great things with Robert Slierden about the warehouse in heaven. We'd pray for people, and they would get new parts, and we could feel it. We could see it, and miracles happen, especially overseas. So um, if you're on here, here today and you're needing a miracle, I'm going to say Jack is going to pray for you at the end of the program today. I'm watching the clock here um, because I want him to pray. Um, I guess sometimes men have more authority than, than a woman does. I'm not Catherine Kuhlman, but anyway, I'm believing for more <laughs> of God. As I study, I eat the word, and we have done this for years. I live by the word, and God keeps us healthy, and yeah, we've had some pitfalls. Jack will maybe get into some of that next week, and um, but anyway, uh, the, um, his character is to bless his people. So we have talked about, is it really God's will to heal the people? And I say undoubtedly, for sure, it is his will, and that's why I'm gone, going through the Old Testament Okay, and then there was the time of King Hezekiah. Uh, you know, the people fell away from God and they didn't observe the Passover anymore. So Hezekiah called them together and said, we're going to celebrate the Passover again. So he called them together and he uh, reinstituted the Passover. And it says in one of those times, and all the people were healed. Let's see, that is Second Chronicles 30, verse 20 that the Lord healed the people after they celebrated the Passover. And I thought, that is really great. Okay, because we talked about the Passover lamb, didn't we? They, they got them through for those many years walking in the wilderness, or, you know. Uh, let's see. And then there was a day of atonement. We're still in part of the back um, uh, Old Testament where they would bring the bullock to the priest and they'd lay the hands on it and had the sin. I guess they brought two, didn't they? I can't remember. Uh, one they sent to the wilderness and one the other one they slit the throat and collected the blood and then they put the blood on the altar. The priest took it into the altar there that was once a year with a sweet smelling uh, perfume and brought it in. And then that was the day of atonement. And their sins were covered. They weren't taken care of completely. That's only the New Testament idea. But at that Day of Atonement, we just celebrated that here just a while ago, where the people would confess their sins and they would, um, I don't know what they did the rest of the year. It was sort of under condemnation, but they confess in that Day of Atonement, the bullock. Okay. Um, but you know, that all pointed to Jesus Christ, isn't it? The Lamb of God. Okay, and if there was no blood on the altar, then judgment would fall. And then I remember the uh, uh, um, the incident of Jesus healed a paralytic man. That's in Matthew 9, verses 2 through 6. And, uh, they brought a paralytic man to Jesus, and, and Jesus said, Oh, take courage, my son. Your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees reacted. What is going on here? And <laughs> so he said, what well, is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or you're healed. And so he said that they're, they're, they're connected completely. <laughs> you know, sins and forgiveness and healing are connected. So Jesus stated that. But then again, we go back to, um, uh, where was it? Uh, let's see. Oh, in the Old Testament, the year of Jubilee. Remember that? Then in that year of Jubilee, that's once every 50 years, all of the Israelites could go back to the land of their inheritance that was given to them. So I think we have an inheritance in Jesus Christ. And that's his 
God's character to go back to the inheritance that he's given us. In the Old Testament, it was always his will to heal the people. And so in the year of Jubilee, they go back to their land. So in the same way, in the year we'll have a year of Jubilee, we can go back and get our inheritance. Jesus paid the price for us. He's given us a great inheritance. So we, that's God's nature to restore what the devil has stolen from us. Uh, let's see. Christ redeemed us from all multiple curses. Let's see, Christ, I told you that man took the curse from us uh, because of Deuteronomy. We've all failed, haven't we? Okay, then um, let's see. There was something real interesting. This is what Bosworth wrote about. He said, think differently about a will because we're talking about, is it really God's will to heal us all? So he brought up like a will. Think of it as a document. So I thought, yeah, this is interesting. So he said, you know, before a person dies, they, they make a will, don't they? So that their heirs will get what uh, he wants them to have. And so I thought, what did Jesus do before he died? He made a will, didn't he? In his will, the Holy Spirit wrote the word way back before the foundation of the world because he was slain before the foundation of the world. Because remember, he healed all those people, didn't he? Well, he hadn't gone to the cross yet and put his blood on the altar, but how could he heal them? Because he was slain before the foundation of the world, so his blood was on the altar. He already paid the price. That's how Jesus could heal all those people, because the price was paid. Justice was secured for all of those people. Even though they were not able to get a new nature, they were not able to get born again before Jesus again put his blood on the altar. But yet, his blood was always effective down through the ages, down through the ages. So, um, you know, like uh, Bosworth said, when a person, let's see, da, 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 the document of the will is the Bible. So we've got a written document there, verified down through the ages. And all of these people wrote the different books of the Bible. They saw the document, didn't they? And the Holy Spirit had them write. And it agrees, healing, 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 healing. Okay, the document is the Bible. His testament. So if we want to know what God's will is, we must read the document. Read the document. It's mm, covered in blood, isn't it? And his word will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his, his word will not pass away. It's like silver tried in a furnace on the earth, refined seven times. It stands forever. And that's his character way back. So then I want to go back now to, um, uh, let's see, the Red Sea. We're going back in time again. Uh, this is what uh, Botsworth does, too. He flips from uh, Old Testament to New Testament, and, um, and I'm, I'm flipping, too. <laughs> so I'm going back to the Old Testament. When did Jesus or God specifically say he was the healer, Jehovah Rapha? Okay, that was after the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. It was just a short time afterwards they started complaining. Oh, we have no water. Oh, you brought us out here to kill us and all of this stuff. And they, they found some water, but it was bitter, wasn't it, that, the um, Mara? And so Moses was told to put a tree into the water. And that tree symbolizes the cross, Jesus Christ. So he threw a tree into the water there, and the water became sweet, and then they could drink it. So hallelujah, God was working all the time. Okay, and that's when he declared himself, he is the healer. Exodus 15, 26, if you give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, keep all his statutes, I will put none of the disease which I have put on. Actually, the word is permitted. Sometimes the scribes, you know, didn't understand because even in the book of Job, there are some misunderstandings there um, uh, in the Hebrew. 
because the the verbs are different than the scribes understood and and different than our other interpreters, even the King James Bible. So, so the Lord permitted those things to come on the on the Egyptians. But he said, if you give earnest heed to my commandments and obey everything I've told you to do, this is Exodus 15, 26. I will permit none of those diseases on you that I allowed on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, the uh, your healer. This was forever settled in heaven, in heaven. So it isn't I was the God, I was the healer. It's I am the healer. You can understand those tenses of those verbs, can't you? And some people, you know, in the traditional church want to say, oh, well, those miracles have passed away. He was the healer in the Old Testament. And, and, and then in, da, 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 in 1 Corinthians um, uh, 13 said, oh, that's passed away. No. Has knowledge passed away? No. No. Prophecy hasn't passed away. No. And the healing has not passed away. He is the God. That is his name. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am that. I am that. I am is what he said to Moses, didn't he? So we need to look at it that way. He is the God. He is still. That is his character. Okay, then in Numbers 21, I talked last week about the fiery serpent. Remember the chip? Uh, the children of Israel complained. Oh, they were so tired. It said they loathed that manna. They were so angry. They didn't like that manna. It must have had all the vitamins and everything in it that they needed. And they did all kinds of ways of cooking it. But they were so tired of it. They really complained to Moses. So um, God sent this fiery serpents who bit them. And then Moses was commanded to take a a brazen serpent and put it on a pole. And if the people would look at that, not just glance, it means look intently. That's in the verb there in the Hebrew. Some of you know that. I see you shaking your heads. <laughs> yes, look intently at it, and then they would be healed. And so, therefore, there was no cause for them to be sick anymore. But God was gracious. That's his character, dear friends, always to heal his people, because he loves his children, and we disobey. But now in the New Testament, we get a new nature. We get more victory than they did in the Old Testament times. So it shouldn't be a problem. I'll get into that. Uh, let's see. That was number 21 about the fiery serpent. And then, um, then I started studying like... Um, uh, I did King David. Or then I got into King David. He was like um, 1,050 years before Christ. And I went through the book of uh, um, Psalms there. And I found more scriptures on healing and then also them on salvation. I wrote them on here, but I don't, don't want to take the time to do that now. But I would encourage you, if, if you're debating about healing, go into them. You know Psalm 103, don't you? He heals all your diseases. And forgives all your sins and heals all your um, diseases and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, all kinds of things. Uh, let's see, with long, oh, Psalm 91, verse 16, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. That's his character. But I, let me tell you that one, I'll give a little testimony here. This was in Psalm 29, verse 9. This is when we started out in the ministry about 30 years ago. We didn't have hardly any money. It was by faith. We did have the house. But anyway, we were going to go overseas. And we collected newspapers. And I don't know, I developed two hernias, and one on each side. And we didn't have any money for surgery. We didn't have any money. Hardly we didn't have to pay off the insurance on the house. And then to buy an airline ticket to go overseas. So I ran into this verse. I've never heard anybody else say it. The voice of the Lord, this is 29.9, the voice of the Lord makes the deer to calve and everything in his temple cries glory. And my spirit rejoiced when I read that word. Everything in his temple cries glory. I am his temple. So if there's something in my body and it's not in right alignment, it has to cry glory or get in line. 
So I didn't have much faith there, but I didn't have any insurance. And we, we couldn't have the surgery. And I was going to go overseas. We had to get an airline ticket, and we were collecting newspapers and selling them and da, da, da. So I just claimed that verse. And, of course, I had other people and pastor pray for me and maybe somebody else. And I, I think by then we knew about the warehouse in heaven. I can't remember. That was like 30 years ago. So anyway, I just claimed it. And I claimed it and claimed it. And I told this body, everything in this temple cries glory. So it has to obey. So I would feel it now and then. It was about the same. And then I forgot about it. Because, I, I don't know, my faith <laughs> was growing. I, I didn't have any money. <laughs> That's what happens overseas. They don't have the money. They don't have the doctors. They don't have the insurance. So they got it. They've tried the witch doctor. They've tried all kinds of things. And they've tried the Buddha. They've tried this other things, and it doesn't work. So they say, well, I don't know. might as well try Jesus. And they get healed. But then they, they don't give up their Buddha. And they still go back and da 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 But God bless them. Uh, he's going to bring them around. So anyway, my temple was um, uh, we checked it, I guess, a few years later, and I felt there's no more hernias. So I just like everything in this temple cries glory connect here. Hallelujah. I'm back. <laughs> okay. So there's lots of my one. I just encourage you if you're there's other scriptures on heart, you know, he heals your heart. Other things like that. All our springs of joy are in him. And let's see. How blessed is the man who considered the helpless. The Lord will um, sustain him upon his sickbed and in his sickness. Uh, thou didst restore him to health. Okay. 73 verse 26. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Thank God I don't have heart problems. Um, God is good. He is very good. Okay, you can find some more in the book of Psalms and underline them. I got them all uh, color-coded in yellow because <laughs> I need to know them quick a minute. Okay, um, let's see. But then look in, in, in the, uh, new, no, the Old Testament, too, about the word salvation. You see that repeatedly. And if you look up that in the Hebrew, it doesn't mean just uh, victory. It means deliverance. It means prosperity. It means peace. It means welfare. And the New Testament, the Greek is so-so, but in the Old Testament, it's Yeshua. Yeshua. Deliverance. You know, God reveals himself in new ways. I could tell you another story how we had to flee from our campus. Maybe I'll get into that later. But anyway, okay. Then, that's David. Now, this is years later after, after David is Solomon. And we talked about that last week, didn't we? Solomon had a revelation of healing, didn't he? Proverbs 4, uh, verse 22, uh, 20 through 22. My son, pay attention to my words. Um, let's see. Incline your ear to my sayings. Um, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for in them, let's see, in the midst of Eric, for they are life to find of life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. This is Solomon saying this. And there's other scriptures in Proverbs about good health. Solomon, Solomon, he knew about health, didn't he? The words. So that's a scripture. In fact, in, in um, Christ the Healer, Bosworth writes about that in his first chapter about oh proverbs if you keep concentrating on that and he said oh many people have just read the first chapter and goiters have disappeared um uh, all kinds of things have disappeared tumors and all of that that was in the 20s and 30s 40s and then they would write in and oh testify just by that proverbs 4 and then he said before you go any further look at chapter 14 about um uh let's see um uh, the uh, the thorn um the thorn in the flesh so i did a teaching on 
Paul's Thorn. And you can go on the YouTube and find it. And go into YouTube and you can put Paul's Thorn and you can put Grace Tulls. And then you can bring it up because I won't go into that. I talked a little bit about that last week. Um, but it is not God's will that you be sick because the, the church has stumbled over just that one statement by Paul that his grace is sufficient. So therefore, but that word, uh, um, it, it referred to in the chapter before about all of his persecutions. So I just recommend going into that and doing some research. Go to Ken Copeland or whatever, some other ones. Who is the thorn in the flesh? People groups. Okay, let's see. But then there's there's Paul. Uh, Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing but in prayer and supplication. Make your request be, known, be made known to God with thanksgiving. And then he'll keep your heart and mind in peace in Christ Jesus. And then Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, of good report, of um, think on these things, and they're with peace for you. And anything worthy of praise, think on these things. So it's keeping our mind fixed on God. And I told you last week, Proverbs 16, 24 Pleasant words are as honey, comb, um, sweet to the soul, and healing to the bones. Because I was telling you I had a broken tooth. I'm not going to get it repaired. I'm going to use the scripture. I'm just believing God is healing that. And every once in a while, my, my back hurts, and I'm speaking pleasant words. And not just a word, out of the abundance of the heart, the, word, the mouth speaks. So out of the abundance of my heart, am I going to complain or am I going to say, oh, look what's happening to America or look what's happening, da, 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 da. No, I'm going to think pleasant things. It isn't that I got my head in the sand. I do see unpleasant things, but I'm not going to dwell on those. I'm going to dwell on his promises that they are good. They cover his people from time since the garden of Eden. It was his plan to restore all that the devil robbed from us. So Proverbs 16, 30, 30, 24, pleasant words are like honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones or healing to the flesh. Many people in America have back problems. It's their bones or their whatever their nerves are pressing on their bones and their bones are pressing on the nerves and all these things. Pleasant words. Do we complain? And then I'm not saying oh, no, I don't complain. I have many opportunities to think of negative things. But since I'm studying, I do keep my mind more in the word. And um, Jeremiah 15, 16 is one of my favorite words, uh, verses. It says, this is Jeremiah. This is like uh, 700 years, no, 600 years, da, 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 600 years before Christ. He said, I found your word and I ate it. And it became the joy and the delight of my heart. For I'm called by your name, Lord of hosts. I found your word and I ate it. And it became the joy of my heart. And um, uh, for I'm called by your name. Hallelujah. His name is in us. I am his temple. His name. Jeremiah didn't know about all these things that we have in the New Testament. But Jeremiah, oh God. Oh, the persecutions he went through. They cursed him continually. They did horrid things. He was the only one there. God didn't want him to even marry or have children. He said, no, because I'm going to bring destruction on the city. He's the only one that heard from God. And God blessed him, but oh, did he suffer. But when God spoke to him, he ate it. He ate it and he delighted in it and said, you became the joy and the delight of my heart, for I've been called by your name, Lord of hosts. If he could do it, and he is in one of these scriptures, if you fail at the time of uh, um, the footman, how are you going to run with the horses? <laughs> I thought, yes, if we fail uh, at the time of the footman, how are we going to run with the horses when the things get worse? So, dear friends, wherever you are in the world, keep on eating the word. 
Keep it in front of your eyes, your heart, in the midst of your heart. Incline your ear, tend to that. If it worked for the people in Solomon's time, in David's time, won't it work for us? We, I, I'm, well, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, Philippians, we have that. Pardon? Ooh, the time is going away. Okay, I got one more thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Bosworth, oh, right. If sickness is the will of God for his faithful children, then it is a sin for them to even desire to be well, not to mention the spending of thousands of dollars to defeat his purpose. Uh, one other teacher, teacher mentioned that if sickness is God's will, then every physician is a lawbreaker, every nurse is breaking the law, and the, we should close the hospitals. And then um, if God gets more gets glory by sickness, then we should all ask for more sickness, shouldn't we? Then God gets more glory. And then why would Jesus heal people? Because then God wasn't getting as much glory. <laughs> Isn't that, that was really yeah. funny. I thought, oh, yes, that is logical. Yes, if God gives more glory by sickness, then Jesus was working at cross purposes to God and the Holy Spirit. Then why should they get healed? God gets more glory if they're sick. Ah, uh, so anyway, I thought I had never thought of it. Well, maybe we had. <laughs> you have. <laughs> okay, it is God's will. Okay, then I want to give because I'm going to give Jack some time in in the book of Hebrews. You know, that's the new covenant in the in the book of Hebrews. Thirteen times it's mentioned a better covenant, a better promises. Thirteen times, better covenant, better promises, better high priest, um, angels uh, which are higher than. Uh, uh, and let's see, let's see. Da, 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 da. Better hope, better sacrifice, better resurrection, better than the blood of Abel. Better than angels, uh, not to mention access to the throne. Look at all of this stuff we got in the New Testament. He says, come with boldness to the throne of grace. and You'll find grace and mercy to help in time of need. And he says, we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2, 6. And we get, when we start complaining, we get out of that place in heavenly places, out of the seating in heavenly places. We're brought down to the world. Oh, oh, oh. Let's not. I'm I'm speaking to myself too, <laughs> and stay up there. Oh, and then just one last thought. What is better, to be sick and get healed? What do you think? In the Old Testament, what about the New Testament? It's better to not get sick. <laughs> uh, so um, I didn't cover it all, but anyway, it's exciting, and I want to give my husband time to pray for the sick. You understand, I, I want to thank you for tuning in. So I'll turn it over to Jack now, and he's going to pray. If you're sick, let's use our faith. We're in agreement. Okay. Okay, everybody. No, we don't have to close our eyes and fold our hands and be religious. We're going to, we're going to go to the Word of God, and we're going to say, Lord, you inspired the man to write this and it's your perfect will and so i'm going to pray that over you those of you who are have pain in your body i command that pain to go in the name of jesus get off them right now you have no right in their bodies in the name of jesus loose them go somewhere else not to our friends in the name of jesus now I'm enforcing the word of God in Romans 8, verse 2, where it says, The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. And that's implied in our members, in our arms, our legs, and all over. So I'm going to pray that prayer for you. I want you to believe in that verse, Romans 8, 2, because God gave us that, that we can use as a weapon against disease and sickness. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I bring that verse Romans 8, 2 to bear on all of those yes. who are struggling tonight with sickness and disease. I command it to be broken in their lives, broken, sickness broken, disease broken, everything fleeing from their bodies. And the 
anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ coming upon them to heal and to deliver. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power that you gave us, for the authority in the name of Jesus. That's right. After all, we're the new creation man. We, we're, we, the new creation man, are spirits. We are a spirit living in an old creation body. But you know, the new creation has power over the old. And so, therefore, we can speak to the body and command it to shape up and to get in line with that Amen. word of God Amen. in every instance. So, one more prayer. For you who are having trouble grasping this with your minds, in the name of Jesus, open up to the word of God right now. Open your heart to receive. Open your mind to receive. And let God's word come into your spirit and go up to your mind with no blockage so that you can hear his words. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the middle of your heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all, all their, their flesh. flesh. Okay, so next week, I'm thinking right now that it's going to be on quantum faith. And so it's going to be a very instructive time together. I may have to take two weeks to do this. And uh, quantum faith, that everything God made is alive. Everything, without exception. Rocks, soil, everything is alive. And yeah, in fact, it says so. In 1 Timothy 6, 13, it says, even God who made all things living. There you go. A living God makes living things. And so we'll start that next week. Now, I want to bless you in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless all those who have tuned in. I cover them with a blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, the patriarch. And with the blessings of Jesus, who went to that cross for us, that we might have eternal life not only, but have eternal health as well. Hallelujah. So until next week, God bless you. God bless you. And we'll see you at Thanks. 7 o'clock on Thanks Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Oh. Cyber world. <laughs> I'm